Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today I am doing a quick review, a kind of all-encompassing review of the Catalyst Fermentation System from Crafter Brew. Now, um, I, if you haven't seen on my channel, I have already done a, a true test with this, being that I put a mead through it um, and talked about it there. But I, I want to um, give kind of my afterthoughts, really just say everything about it all in one video and not a long 40 minute making a mead. So <clears throat> to start off with, Crafter Brew, um, just upon sending this, the box that came in is very, very professional, and if I can find a video clip or a, a picture of it, I will put it right here. But the box is really um, nice and clear, and it came very well protected and sealed as it was shipped. So they did a great job um, of keeping it safe, because while this stuff is very durable, you know, shipping can get a little crazy. So that was my first impression was a very nice box, um, and it had nice information inside of it. Everything was well wrapped. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Unpacking it, I was uh, also pleased to see everything you get with this fermentation system. So I'll tell you everything you get. Um, the, we'll go top down. So you, you get a couple small stuff. You get a, uh, basically a bunge or whatever you call it, um, that goes in the top here. You get one that's a craft brew labeled. So they have their own, um, I mean, own labeling system for things, but also it's just nice to see a professional company that is not just using stock uh, bunges or uh, mason jars even. So you get that small piece. You get a, a uh, siphon hose, uh, which is nice. It's only about three feet. You also get a bottling attachment or a racking attachment that goes to the bottom of the uh, bottom up here that we'll talk about more. Uh, you get a mason jar that attaches to the bottom as well as our butterfly valve, but continuing top down. You get a, a very nice uh, lid. This lid is really great. I must say that as I tested it, I was a little bit curious to see if it would seal well. It seals super well. And if you know anything about um, fermenting with buckets, um, oftentimes a bad seal can be your demise in that you can let bacteria in and or you run the risk of not seeing any fermentation because it's leaving in other places. This did not have that issue. It clamps down on the sides of the uh, actual bucket really nicely, and it's wet right now because um, I had just sanitized it. So it is all, um, it's really easy to use. Clamps down, very nice seal, and of course you have the hole there for your airlock. Now we get to the main fermenter part. So this right here is the whole, uh, kind of the meat and potatoes of the, the thing. You have your conical firmer, conical fermenter, large conical fermenter, really nice, nice plastic. This stuff is heavy duty. If I dropped it right now, um, other than the glass on the bottom, I think that it would probably be just fine. And all of your stuff, like a conical fermenter, collects down at the bottom. But the really cool thing is, this thing has a butterfly valve. Now, a butterfly valve system means that you can turn this notch and it opens a flap and closes the flap. So if looking down in here, see if I can show you, if you, op right now is open, if I do that, I can close this flap, which would mean that uh, all of my stuff sitting here, ooh, hit myself, all my stuff that would be sitting in here, uh, would, I could take this jar off for a moment, empty it out, put it back on without risk of losing all of my meat out of here, and then when you put your jar back on, open your butterfly valve back up, and then you have all of your stuff falling back down into there. That's super, super nice for collecting sediment, ye uh, dead yeast, um, the trub for beers, anything that you don't want in your liquor and your alcohol for a long time. Um, and th I think that's important for brewing. It kind of alleviates the need to rack a lot. In my mead, as I made, um, I didn't have to rack a million times because I had this. It just all settled at the bottom, close this thing off, open it up, get rid of it, and then, of course, if there was more, it'd fall down. But I really like that. Um, this is also very nice equipment. You can take apart the butterfly valve um, system here, but you don't really need to. Um, and cleaning gets really easy, too, because they all come off. This, this system right here comes off like this, so you can clean separately. You can also take the mason jar off, of course, so it is all easy, really nice to clean. Okay, so that is that. So that's the main brewing vessel. Let's set this to the side for now. 
Now we get to the stand. This stand right here is also very, very sturdy, very nice. Um, it came in, uh, I think, four pieces, two legs, yeah, uh, two legs and then the top, basically. And um, all together, it is very, very, very sturdy, like I said. Um, it has a little rubber kind of etch around here so that when you put the actual furniture in, it doesn't slide around. And that's another good point of this. This whole system is very secure as it sits in here. So, of course, you're not going to be doing this very often, but this, if you for some reason had, had an issue with, um, you know, dropping it or something like that, it's, it's not going to fall. It's very, very secure. And I think that's a good testament of this um, stand, but also of the whole system itself. So that was very impressive to me. I had an easy time using this. It's also very light, which is nice. Of course, when you have an alcohol inside the fermenter, you're gonna have some issues um, with weight, but that's okay. Speaking of that, I forgot to mention, that's a six and a half gallon fermenter. Really nice, uh, definitely gets the job done. I, most of the time I'm making meads that are about five to six gallons, um, not really going past that too often. So that's everything included in this. Excuse me, now, Talking about the actual utility using it, um, I, I did have a, a couple little issues. They're nothing too major. There's one like major issue, but I'll talk about why it's not a major issue. My issues uh, were, I mean, sometimes whenever I was trying to unscrew this uh, jar, if you, you really have to make sure you get a nice seal, so screw it pretty tight. When you're unscrewing it um, and it's sitting here, you do run into the issue that uh, no matter how much you try to avoid, you can close this down, no matter, no matter how much you try to avoid losing any more mead, when you open this up, it would uh, often, you, first of all, you have to make sure this is fine, it would lose some down the bottom, and that's just because this butterfly valve still holds a little mead. There's like a probably a quarter inch of airspace that, um, that some liquid can sit in, and so that kind of falls out. You just have to plan for that. Most of the time it's still bad stuff you don't want. Dead yeast, sediment, shrub, that stuff. So that was a little bit of an issue for me. Um, so making sure you just tighten everything well. That's not a huge issue. That's more on my part than it is theirs. Uh, the first time I put the lid on, it was a little bit stiff, but I think that's a good thing because it made it to where it, it wore itself in and it was now very easy. Uh, to do, but it, obviously you want that nice seal. So you kind of want a little resistance when you do that. Um, let see, what other issues did I have? I, I really didn't have too many big issues. My other, quote, big issue I had, and I don't have a great example of this, is, uh, actually, yeah, I do. So I'm gonna, I have some star sand water over here. Not a ton of it, so I'm just gonna dump this in here. So let's say this is a mead. So if this is my mead, of course you'd have more of it. The butterfly valve is currently closed. And now this is a big issue that a lot of people talk about, have talked about, because um, everyone's afraid of aeration or oxygenation. So when you open up this butterfly valve for the first time to let uh, everything fall in, it sends a surge of air through the mead, through the alcohol. If you know anything about that, alcohol, and uh, air don't really mix together. Um, and they can kind of mess up your, your alcohol. However, and I'll show you, demonstrate real fast and then I'll explain why this is not an issue. So let's say I opened it up. There's a big kind of flush of, of um, air that went through that right there. Here's why this is not too big of an issue for me. Now I'm not saying it's not an issue for other people. It's definitely not an issue for me. It's not one because whenever you are fermenting in the primary, uh, part of a mead, a beer, whatever, that alcohol needs oxygen. The yeast need oxygen to thrive. So let's say the first time you open that thing up, it sends oxygen through, um, your yeast can use that. And then maybe the second time, third time. Here's where that becomes an issue. If you're making like a beer and you don't, um, like rack over into this container. If you just poured all your beer and trub into this, you'd have so much beer, you so much trub to deal with that you're constantly opening and closing this thing, which yes, in that case, you're gonna have to probably open and close this 
eight to 10 times to get all of your sediment out, which then that is a lot of oxygen. However, for me as a mead maker, um, I generally am not gonna run into that much sediment unless I straight up put like my apples or whatever in there, in which case, yeah, you're gonna have an issue of things going down there. But my whole point is um, oxygen in the primaries, not, not a big deal. Oxygen in the secondary, let's say that this had finished fermenting and it's at a 12% alcohol and I'm just letting it sit in there. Yeah, over time, that's not good for the uh, mead because there's no more fermentation happening, no need for oxygen to be a part of that system. So if you're using it as a secondary fermentation vessel or a long-term storage, you're gonna run into issues. However, if you're gonna be long-term storing mead or stuff like that, you don't really wanna use buckets because buckets uh, don't do great with long-term storage, long-term um, aging. You wanna use glass if possible. Of course, if you're sitting in buckets, it's not that, you know, it's not the end of the world. It can affect a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. I would hesitate to use this thing as a, um, as a long-term storage. I'm gonna use it as a primary fermentation vessel which is perfect for what I need to do. That oxygen is probably the biggest issue. Like I said, not a big issue for me, maybe a big issue for someone else. Overall though, this whole system is really, really nice. It, uh, just very functional, out of the box, super easy to use. And I, I'd recommend it if you want a conical, large conical fermenter. It's really not too big. Like you think, oh man, that thing's massive but uh, it doesn't take up too much space in my brew room and I have very limited space. So I was content to be using, to have it in my storage area and I think you would be too. Um, you should go check it out. This is the Catalyst Fermenter from Crafter Brew. Um, they, I'll link it right here and also down in the description. They have some amazing other products but this product itself is very, very nice and I would highly recommend you check it out. I am very impressed by it. Um, everything has its issues. Um, I don't know how you'd fix the whole oxygen situation. Maybe if you opened it slower, I don't know. I don't know what the fix would, for that would be. Um, but if that's my biggest issue with it, then I think they're doing pretty well. Uh, I hope that you'll go check it out because I'm impressed and I think that you'd like it too. Um, and of course, if you want to buy anything else from them, there's that link as well for anything they have. So. Uh, thanks for watching this quick review. I hope I've hit all the great points. I'm trying to think if I've missed anything. Um, talked about everything. No, I think I'm good. So this, this system's great. I have a link down for it below. I also have a bunch of links for other things. I have a Facebook page where you can be part of our mead making community where we get to talk about mead making, all of those things. Uh, it's pretty fun. That's facebook.com slash manmade meadery. There's a Patreon where you can get early access to my content, support me directly, um, and you can get some other perks like I do live streams. I did the unboxing live stream uh, of this thing on, for my patrons, so they got to see that, which is kind of fun. Uh, what else do I have? I have a Society6 a merchandise store. You can buy t-shirts for, for, or from me, which is kind of fun. Um, a website, manmademead.com, in the blog section. You can also buy even more merchandise, like it's kind of exclusive stuff. It is a bottle opener with uh, the Man Made Mead logo on it, and then a sticker pack, and um, you know, I'd love to send that your way. Uh, that stuff actually directly does support me. There's no, nothing taken out of, like Patreon takes a portion, it's a size six takes, takes a portion of that. So you're directly supporting me. Um, and then I'm trying to think of other things, PO Box. If you want to send me anything, uh, I, I love getting letters and honey and whatever else you want to send me. It's kind of fun. But I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been really cool to review something like this. I will definitely be using this again very soon. I actually have, I just moved another mead out of it and I already have plans to put another mead in or to start another mead in it. So it's going to get a lot of use and I hope you get some use out of it too. So uh, check it out. Hope you guys have a great day and uh, cheers.